Alexander Paul here looking to hit this one somewhere over mid on, wide of mid on. Playing across the line. He's been doing that quite a bit recently. Should be looking to hit those balls on the offside. Play as straight as possible early on. West Indies don't want to lose early wickets. Good stop by Tuffy. Whenever he had to make a decision between cricket and rugby, Daryl Tuffy, a Maori. on that subject Jeff Wilson making a return to cricket nicely dabbed on by China Paul just to run for it but always in control of the shot Shane Bond down at third man big fast bowler but moved quickly onto the ball Trying to work this ball on the leg side. Slower delivery. You can see the fingers wrapped around that, just twirling the fingers over it. Chris Gale lucky that he got enough length on it. Went up high in the air, but well clear of the fielder. Get on. Again, Sharon Fall just content to wait for the delivery. Runs it down to Bond once more. So mixing the aggression with I suppose patience and a little bit of style from Shivnarayan Chandapur. He used to have a problem with his pads in Chandapur. I know he seemed to cramp it. That's Christopher Gale. Towards Bond, the third man, he's got to watch the bounce. He does day. almost spun away from him. End of the over there, 23 without loss. After five overs, the West Indies ahead, and the, the current run rate is 4.6 per over, which is just slightly below the required rate. There's uh, almost a trademark shot from Christopher Gale, just a push down to long off, and he takes up a boundary, beats the two fielders, and it really was just a gentle push from the Jamaican. Full toss here by Shane Bond. And Chris Gale didn't try to hit it too hard. Just kept his head down, pushed it past middle of the man. Is wide in that position. Chris Gale there looking for the big shot. Not getting hold of it, slicing it. Dunk to third. That was the last over. Just sort of squaring him off a bit, Shane Bond. Not the uh, previous delivery. Almost just the beginnings of an inside-out shot. But just a gentle push. And four runs. 
Let's have a look at this. Almost swinging the bat around in the in the hands, and the delivery before that, where he got the boundary, it was on that sort of line. So far, Shane Bond is forcing Gale back on that occasion. Yeah, 91.7 is his fastest so far, memory serves. Not far off it. Interesting to see how long through his spell he generates the same amount of pace. defensive stroke and you can sometimes see why he gets into trouble the back seems to just come down in front of the body there's very little foot movement and if there is any movement off the seam then he's a, a prime candidate for a court behind and he's been caught behind a few times let's have a look at this there Not really pushing out or going back to the delivery just bringing the bat in front of the body and just hanging it in front of the chest <laughs> This is, this is well bowled by Shane Bond. Bowling is straight as possible to Chris Gale, not giving him any room outside the off stand. He likes to hit the ball of the back foot through cover, extra cover reason, region point. Chris Gale is very straight by Bond. Bit of a misfield, and they take the opportunity to take the single. Not the last ball of the over. It's 28 without loss. for the West Indies at 4.67. Oh, man sent all the way back down to the boundary for this new over from coffee. Yep. Yeah, there's a tall man. He likes a, a full flow of the arms. And a phlegmatic, phlegmatic character his effort during the uh, one day as that were possible against India. But, uh, a really big 84 in uh, Trinidad. That's big shot to him. And uh, you wouldn't lose too much money on betting where he'd hit it. Down to the long of boundary for four. The outside, Chris Gale, slow delivery, but he wasn't deceived by it. Got hold of it nicely, timed it well. Just an economy of movement from Christopher Gale. Not a lot of agitation waiting for the bowler. He doesn't, like most batsmen, pull at the pad or flick at the helmet. Really, just seems to want to get the next ball in and away. That's his best against Kenya on that uh, tour of Africa. And is he edging that one? Has it taken cleanly? We look at the outside, no movement. 
from the umpire, did it carry? And that can only be the question. Certainly there seemed to be an edge. Eddie Nichols unmoved. And the New Zealanders were all out. Loud appeal by all the umpires. Tuffy is excited about that. Thinking that Chris Gale nicked it. Clearly taken by the keeper, no doubt about that. No doubt about that being involved there. But uh, what happened? on the previous delivery. Oh, the back. Nickel. Sorry, Wayne, the back seemed to come down and hit the, the heel. But Eddie, Eddie Nichols wasn't moved. Tuffy thought he had hit it. End of an eventful over. 32 Six without that. of the West Indies innings completed, 4.57, looking to get up to a target of a further 217 runs. Changing your commentary team, Tazir Mohammed with him is Ian Bishop. Suddenly has the pace. Sean Paul playing positively, but he's already impressed here in the Caribbean Sheen Bond. Part of the world where fast bowling is certainly revered. Almost 93 miles per hour. It's quickest delivery. Surely it's only relative if you're bowling a slower delivery at 86.6. It still hurts. an incident in the last over and Daryl Tuffy bowling to Christopher Gale. Now just look at the bat after the ball passes and look at the head of Chris Gale. Just tries to pull it out of the way and the head spins around and all the indications are to me I think he might have nicked this the one that got away. You could hear your pain Ian Bishop as a suffering bowler yourself at times. China ball and Gail won't mind. Got an excellent platform at the moment. <laughs> Took the pace to that delivery down to third man. On the battle. Yeah. Have another look at this delivery of Chris Gale. And just from that angle. Looks as though there was a bit of a deflection there. The keeper was in no doubt. Neither was Daryl Tuffy, who didn't even look back until he did not see Chris Gill walking and then turned around to umpire Nichols. And there's Tuffy. So he feeling missed out on one. He's the man under pressure. I think we've learned over the years that vociferous celebrations aren't exactly the best guide to the validity of an appeal but in this case I don't think uh, the 
evidence of the replay would have really contradicted the general feeling here that Chris Gill is lucky to still be there. We'll be looking to continue this partnership for some time. Another meaty drive, but it's off the bottom of the bat. Clearly looking for those opportunities to go over the top in the first 15 overs. And where the pressure comes for New Zealand is the fact that the bowlers, Bond and company, haven't had an outing. They haven't played cricket for some time since the aborted tour of Pakistan. They wouldn't have played a great deal of matches in between that first-class level or otherwise. And the bowlers will be a bit rusty. The West Indies, Gale and company have been playing quite a lot. Can't find the gap on the last ball of the over. It's 33 without loss. Now taking over from Daryl Tuffy. It is one day international debut in Jamaica, and of course, with the West Indies not batting, this will be his first ball in a one day international. Required rate, not all that challenging at the moment. from offside field, still with the restrictions of the first 15 overs. And he's taking that one on the onside, looking for that gap. First delivery, just a dot ball. Well, I have to say, it's a bit of a risky shot from Chandapal. Didn't get out of the crease, and that was heading towards the off stump or just outside and looking to whip it through the onside. And he hasn't seen Hitchcock before. It hasn't taken him much time to try to be the aggressor. Again, the aggressor, and he finds the gap this time on the offside, out through wideish extra cover. And uh, Shinrain Chandapur continuing with the form that he showed virtually from the first day of uh, the Caribbean season. Not a good start for his job. Short and wide. Chandapur won't miss out. He's been in sparkling for Stephen Fleming. Didn't make the bravest of attempts to try to stop that. Just a half-hearted attempt, really. Second boundary in 17. Missed the chance there. Delivery just outside the line of the leg stump. And Hitchcock will know that he's got to be on spot pretty early. These pitches in the Caribbean are really unforgiving. And the one-day game is the batsman's day. It's what the fans have come for. You see runs being scored, and New Zealand have done a useful job, 248 for seven. Just the single this time. Important as well from the West Indies viewpoint to keep the scoreboard ticking over, not just looking for the boundaries. Fleming directing his troops. Slight adjustments, always a, a matter of the couple of angles. Taking extreme care in setting his field. Slow 
delivery there that just brushes the pad. Had him called a wide. Interesting. Schizophrenic, maybe. Vincent and Vincent. I can tell you for sure the man on the left is not Le Vincent, it's Daniel Vittori. Even if the numbers are different. 38 without loss. Individuals, great stature, different facets of uh, Caribbean life. The cricketer, former cricketer Kurt Lee Ambrose on the left, and uh, Dr. Kenny Anthony, the Prime Minister of St. Lucia on the right. Pretty animated discussion. Kurt Lee Ambrose. Otto often seems smiling so broadly when he's chatting with the media. Almost always feels he's under pressure, but that apart, always has that ear-to-ear -ear grin. I wonder if they're talking about football more than anything else. He's a great fan of the game, Kirtley Ambrose. Quicker delivery there, seemed to be beating the pace just a bit. Feel looking backwards as he played that forcing shot. He gets onto you a bit quicker than you think. The scale might be better advised to be at least trying to get forward. Uses his feet a great deal. It's not always found in the correct position, but he's got a great eye, good hand eye coordination. Once he gets back to ball, he usually goes. So his impetus in getting the West Indies off to a good start is vital now. It's always going to be in the future. Again, can't beat the field, coming off the bottom of the bat. Shane Bond after a pretty rough start, seems to be settling down. But he hasn't started well enough. He's short match practice. Indeed, the entire New Zealand team have been hampered by the rain on their tour of the West Indies. First over is an expensive one. It's just the last couple of overs. It has come back reasonably well. Good bit of work on the field. Saving probably a couple of runs. Chris Harris, one of the long-standing servants of New Zealand cricket very very adept in every department of the game no doubt will be a factor in the, the world cup campaign in south africa just a matter of months away shane bond will be hoping to be injury free into that tournament finding the out there short and wide and he was able to latch on to it with those powerful arms of his Chris Gale gets a welcome boundary. It's 43 without loss and the fans have reason to celebrate. The quicker they come, the harder they go. That's one of the downsides of bowling with extreme pace. If you're marginally offline and the bat gets the ball, then it races away. That's good placement from Chris Gale. Got on top of it and hit it well. Just a fraction, but running out towards the Lomov region. Tuffy will pick it up. Bit of a slide, big man. Momentum takes him well over the boundary, but the ball stays in. And then the yeah. over from Shane Bond. Ten overs gone, 46 without loss.
just a fraction under five runs for over. That was the last ball of the previous over, Chris Gale. Just slicing it between mid-off and short extra cover. We've got a good platform at the moment. Not too much difference. Of course, New Zealand lost one of their key players, Nathan Astle, very, very early. Then came a 50 partnership between Nevin and Fleming. Just a over five runs per over the West Indies require. Important for them to have wickets in hand. Another change of pace brings about a single. Yeah. Tuffy coming off the boundary. Hitchcock will be feeling the pressure a bit for any young man coming into his first international fixture wherever it may be, cause for some butterflies. And that's what the West Indian batsmen are going to have to negotiate. I think the two key bowlers, and Harris and Vittori, that may cause some problems later on, but these two, Chandapur and Gale, gotten themselves entrenched on a pitch that is very, very good. You want to continue building your total, not give it away in this situation. Just looking to feather that one away down to third man. He easily edged it to the keeper. Sometimes it's a question of the bowler just playing on the batsman's confidence, knowing that Chandapal wants to, to go for every shot. Look to unsettle the young man. Again, beating him outside the Austin. It's just a little loose, you see. It just doesn't seem to be picking up the momentum, the pace of the pitch. Just playing a bit loose, bat away from body. He's been in such good form. And sometimes that can spill over into overconfidence. You've got to remain hungry. You get starts, you build on it, don't give it away at all. Chandapur crashes that one through mid off to a spoiler. Useful over from uh, Paul Hitchcock. That brings up uh, the 50 as well for the West Indies. 51 without loss. Takes a slight frame and steady nerves to be up there. West Indies have held their nerve as well in pursuit of 248. Beautifully played by John de Paul. Tremendous confidence uh, really flowing off his bat. Finding the gap on the offside. Last ball of the previous over. Daryl Tuffy is on, replacing Shane Bond. <laughs> Going for that one high, out over cover. One bounce, really gave him the whiff, and uh, Chris Gale needed no second bidding. Scale and Shipper and Chandler certainly taking advantage of the restrictions within these first 15 overs. Let's give himself some room. Absolutely smashed it. Just a little bit of room there. Using a full extension of the arms. In the air and a taken low at a mid-off. 
and Chris Gale perishes so often. We've seen him go in that fashion, getting carried away with the stroke play. The West Indies have lost their first wicket, 55 for one. And he just spliced this one. You see the bat just coming across the actual line of the delivery. And that's why he didn't get as much bat onto it as he wanted. It's a good catch though. That's sorry. Very good catch indeed. Chris Gale has gone from 30, 55 for one. Ramnari Sarwan is the new man, the young man who certainly made the number three spot his own for the West Indies. Test matches all won the internationals. Useful record. Want to improve on those numbers significantly. Sarwan is there because of the dismissal of Chris Gale. Splicing it once again. Got a boundary the ball before. So he'll be somewhat disappointed to have given his wicket away the very next delivery. At the time when he was getting in on a very good surface, West Indies lose their first wicket, 55. Good delivery first up, and Daryl Tuffy's gotten just reward, because while a lot of the attention has been on Sheen Bond with his pace, got one for 16 at the moment and in the context of the way the West Indies have gone he's done a useful job bowled very well in New Zealand's recent tour to Pakistan in the absence of Shane Bond and Daryl Tuffy he was very economical and carried a heavy workload in the absence of Chris Cairns Got a name that's almost that of a cartoon character. I think that uh, like Tuffy would be larger than life. Well, he's big enough, Daryl Tuffy, and he's got good reason to be smiling. Young man with the Maori ancestry. Best figures four for 24. Ifish sort of run rate. I think there was a time where 4.62 would be considered expensive. But generally now, not on day one, the internationals, anything under 50, under 50 runs per 10 overs, under five runs and over, it's relatively good. So I think once you start bowling at the start of the innings with the feeling restrictions, you can expect to go for a few boundaries. So I think it's reasonable for a young man. The end of a very good over from uh, Daryl Tuffy, getting the wicket off of Chris Gale. The West Indies are 55 for one. Positions almost identical 
just the additional wicket going down for New Zealand. And this is a key area for up again for the West Indies, isn't it? Jury's still out on Ramar Sawan. As to how good a one-day player he is, he will score his runs. And how quickly he scores them is really going to be the issue now. It's just important now to see what sort of mode he plays in. If he's going to stick around and manipulate the strike, how Shivnaran Chandapur changes gear now. So this is another vital partnership with Brian Lara to come next, who's not been in the best of form. Pretty much on spot, Paul Hitchcock. And it helps for the bowling side when you've just taken the wicket of an attacking batsman. Very much so, and for Hitchcock as well, he's now got that cushion of knowing that, well, he might be just bowling at Sarawan. It'll take some time for Sarawan to get in, so it also gives Hitchcock a little time to settle in to a good rhythm. Great. And he's doing it well. He knows that there's tremendous responsibility on his shoulders after the early efforts of Tuffy and Shane Bond. Walks back to the top of his mark, looking again at that ball, probably thinking of a bit of a change of pace. And there's the, the risk of the pressure building somewhat on the West Indies. As they play a few dot balls, a few maiden overs, a couple of inexpensive overs go by. That pressure might just be building ever so slightly. Yeah, it's a rate required rate required at this point is just over five you want you don't want that to build too high at any point in the innings six or sevens that's what you try to avoid as a batting team under edge and looking for that gap so i want still to get off the mark after the loss of gale for 30. driving low to mid off and he was dismissed at the Queen's Park over against India in similar fashion. In the game the West Indies won in 25 over game, just trying to play a similar shot, hitting it too hard and dragging it into his stumps. So he needs to get himself into rhythm. Yeah. We'll get off the mark now of the final ball of the over. The West Indies are 57 for one. Very good weather so far in St. Lucia. I think those who located the stadium here at Beausejour, just in the area of the hills, well north of the capital Castries, where the Mindu Phillip Park hosted the two one day internationals against Australia, 1978 and 84. It was absolutely pouring in Castries yesterday, and there was bright sunshine at the same time at this ground and it is now yeah. finally we got well Ramna Risawan for a couple of runs maybe the driest part of the island but they won't like the runs to dry up as quickly as they had in the last three overs Speaking a short while ago about the economy rates of bowlers, this is a list of current players, the best economy rates in one day international cricket. Sean Pollock at the top of the list, Cameron Cuffey playing in today's match also in there. There's even the name of Corey Colomo. So you see, there's 10 guys in that list. Mark Elam at the bottom at 4.8, and he's reasonably successful at one-day international cricket. So, 
Anything under five, I think, is good without being outstanding. Daryl Tuffy today is under four so far, and in his career, just under five. So I think he'd be reasonably satisfied. Yeah. Again, we'll get this single down to third man. Back. So the New Zealanders have just tried to keep things tight for the last three or four overs. To the bright start from Gail and Chandapol. Saron kept in check. Chandapol may be straining to cut loose, but he hasn't had much of the strike the last couple of overs. There you can see the room just uh, on or about the same position as the New Zealanders. Got to get to 249. Just a single. Hot work out there, and uh, there we see the West Indies effort so far. Very expensive first over from Shane Bond. And then almost evening out, particularly after the loss of Gale. Right on spot, Daryl Tuffy. The end of over number 14, it's 61 for one. for the West Indies. Chandapal in prime form. Sarawan, tremendous promise. Let's see what Hitchcock can offer this time. Well done by the bowler. 61 for one. Joining us in the commentary position, Wayne Daniel with him, Tony Cozy. That was a tremendous athletic effort by Hitchcock. His first uh, one-day international. First appearance, correction, second one-day international. Played in Jamaica, of course. First time he's bowling. Another great stop. New Zealand is... Uh, really place a uh, great emphasis on their fielding. Astle there. They'll throw themselves around, the New Zealanders. Trying to pull, dragging that one a bit, perhaps getting it at the bottom of the bat. Not getting the full meat of the bat on it. Sarwan at uh, three. What do you reckon overall, Wayne, about the, the batting order? It's changed so frequently over the years in the one day internationals. We had Ridley Jacobs opening, Lara used to open, and Lara at three. How do you look at the batting order? Sarwan here is not exactly getting the ball away. He's been in good form in the test series. He really wants to be looking to work the ball around, try to get the ball in between the field get the singles, look for the twos. Very nearly played on. Anxious look back by Chandapal. And a couple of played ons in the New Zealand innings. Yes, that one perhaps not quite coming on. Chandapal very lucky not to drag that one on to his stumps, he's getting it on the bottom of the bat. I think you want someone like Carl Hooper to get it quite early, Tony. You want Carl Hooper to be batting quite a few overs. He's in such good form, and he's a powerful striker of the ball. He can work the ball around. 
who most certainly doesn't want to be coming in with just 20 overs to go. So that is something that I think the West Indies are going to have to think about. Someone like Carl Hooper coming in, especially when you're chasing such a big target. So important uh, for the main batsman to be able to bat virtually all the way through. Well, Chandler Paul has now been promoted to open. We saw the effect of Fleming today. And you'll see them with 55 for four and really struggling. Fleming just provided the cement to the, the innings. Played really well and got support from Vincent and the Styrus. Found the gap, Chandler Paul. Interesting change after 15 overs. Stephen Fleming hasn't wasted any time to bring on Daniel Vittori now that he can uh, drop the field out. 15 overs, so the field restrictions are over. Whereas only two men outside the area for the first 15 overs. Five now can be dropped out. Only four within the, the area. And Vittori is a um, young but outstanding left arm spinner. But I suppose he's got on Vincent's shirt. Both uh, begin with V. Now he's going to have uh, five men, I think, inside that area. He himself is going to stay slip. There was some, some turn. We saw Carl Hooper spin one in the West Indies innings. So Daniel Vittori. Classical left arm spinner's action. Youngest bowler to 100 test wickets, uh, Daniel Vittori. Just overcome uh, injury. Come back into the side after just over a year out of it. Back injury. Nice, easy action, nice flight. There's his uh, test career, 131 wickets. Average quite high though, 34. But a good strike rate. Take a little time just to get acclimatized, get accustomed to him. Sawan wouldn't have faced him before. Oh, yeah, Last time these teams met was in New Zealand, 1999 into 2000, going into the millennium. Let's see if you count 2000 as the millennium. Vittori not afraid to give the ball some flight, a little bit of air. Sawan needs to try to work the ball between the field. Looking to hit it a bit too hard, I think, at this stage. Okay. Well, just one run off the over, off the last ball. Chandler Paul keeps the strike. 66 for one, and the umpires have signaled for the drinks to come onto the ground.
the West Indies. Chasing this target uh, just on the five runs and over they have to get. 249. Started with Chandapal for the first time and might have gone early. Leg side uh, miss off Bond, little flick. But after that, uh, soon on the way. Gale as well. Full toss, pushed away for four. And then a more authentic Gale like shot over the top for another boundary. Chandapal looking to pull it, getting it square in the offside in the opposite direction. No question where Gale wanted that. And it found the boundary. And no question where Chandapal wanted that either. The wicket, firm drive, but straight into the lap of mid-off. Comfortably taken by Vittori. And that's the only wicket that the Black Caps have got so far. And Paul Hitchcock, the medium pacer, will continue. 66 for one, 16 overs gone. So the drinks. Here's Sawa. So I want you to really be looking to give as much strike, as much of the strike to Chandra Paul as possible. West Indies needing another 183 runs. Just 15 runs from the last six overs. So I'm just finding it a little bit difficult here to get the ball away wasn't used uh, in the one-day internationals early in his career came in in Zimbabwe last year and then played at number three in Sri Lanka in the three-way series there of course didn't go to Sharjah in the series against Pakistan because of a back injury and has to take the chance of uh, taking runs like that just to get Chandapal back onto the strike just be a revision of the, the batting order perhaps after today's match. Well, yes, I, was, I think that would certainly be in the selector's mind. Um, Lara to come next is not in the best of form. Be interesting to see if Hooper comes in before Lara. It's Brian Lara there. He's done to come next. Not in the best of form in the recently concluded series against India. But he'll be looking to make amends in this series. Against India, 35 is best in the test series. 36, 55, sorry, is best. Got his right hand to it, but could only parry it around the post. Uh, as they tend to say in the other game that is now being played halfway across the world. But he struck it well. Would have been a magnificent take. Yes, he's obviously following through, going the other way, and then had to go back to his right. Tremendous effort. Would have been a great catch if he'd taken it. They've got the pressure right on here. Hey. Five men still within the field restricting area. We need only have four. Chandapal just seems to have lost a little bit of rhythm since Sarwan has come in. Sarwan, seven off 24 deliveries. And the wicket of uh, Chandapal there certainly would have been a huge setback for the West Indies. Six men within the field restricting area for Sarwan. Just can't get it through. So West Indies stalled here. Overended. Two runs off it, 68 for one.
the wicket of Gale last. And since then, West Indies have found runs very difficult to come by. Sarwan has come in, hasn't been able to put the ball away. Chandapal hasn't had much of the strike since he's come in. And New Zealand, just with a slight edge as far as the runs are concerned, they had lost four wickets. But uh, then they were revived quite splendidly by Fleming, captain uh, just being the sheet anchor and the others building around him, Vincent, and especially Scott Styrus, who played magnificently for 85. Vittori here will use the breeze to his advantage. And it is strong. Over the wicket to the left-hander. That breeze will be coming from about mid-on. Indies beginning just to droop its head. Vittoria has dropped right away into immaculate control. Line and length, he's using the air skillfully. Now with four deliveries, none scored from. He drops back the mid-off to long off. So that's to save the boundary. Exactly why he's been dropped back. Would have gone for four had he been in the orthodox middle position, just two. Good shot by Chanjapal. Well flighted delivery from Vittori. Chanjapal oh, hitting it very hard. And just chipping for a single off the last ball. Three runs from the over. 18 gone, 71 for one. Will be somewhat disappointed with the crowd that's turned out today in the stands. Absolutely packed on the ground section. But uh, big match, opening match. First uh, one day international on the new Bosejur Stadium here. And uh, look at all those empty seats. Not too sure exactly what the price of entrance is but we understand it's uh, quite steep and that may be something that the organizers will, will, be, will look, be looking at I think Chandra Paul is saw one I'm sorry gonna have to look to improvise here the run rate the required rate is over five and over On himself and on Chandapal here now. You just feel that something's got to give. Either Sarwan or the opposition. Yes, uh, you've got to get to a, a takeoff point. And West Indies not there, falling behind, very much behind at the moment. And Sarwan is going to have to look to try and get the ball away. He's just um, in, a, in a rut here now. 
West Indies have lengthened their batting for this match as they did in Jamaica. 21 balls he's not scored from from the 27 he's faced. And it must be now at the back of his mind uh, just beginning to eat away at his confidence. He knows that uh, he's got to do something here now. It just can't continue like this for much longer. His whole body language tells a story. Head just dropped there when he played that down in front. He couldn't get it through. New Zealand really playing it well now. You can see this is a, a well-drilled team. Knows all about the intricacies of the one-day game. You could have seen that when they batted, how they recovered, how Fleming played. Now with their bowling and their field placing. Very efficient unit indeed. I think Fleming has got the field placing right. He's just put the man out on deep point on the boundary. Because Chandra Paul is really sorry, I'm sorry. He's got to look to improvise. He's got to look to try to hit the ball over cover, extra cover region. Try to get inside out. Use his feet, do something. But Hitchcock. Very adept uh, ball in the slower ball, mixing it up. Over. Only one run off the over, and Ch Chanda Paul is at dead stop. 72 for one. Very comfortable. I couldn't believe that he really is. Let's get it. For him to go. At the moment, perhaps a bit more comfortable than the West Indies batsman. Just can't get the ball away. Well, yes, uh, Sarawan is certainly going to put a lot of pressure on Chandra Paul. guy in the tree would have to be, I would think, a quarter mile away from the ground. And he's up there, he's watching from a high vantage point. This ground nestled uh, beneath the Bosajur Hills. First uh, effective match of the series. West Indies uh, had the upper hand before the rain came at Sabina Park on Wednesday. New Zealand all out for 176 up, up there after 50 overs. But, uh, really playing it well here, tightening the grip on the West Indies. with a lot of control seem to be just holding it up up there that delivery to Sarwan but he's got to try to get him over mid wicket he's got to be aiming for that mid wicket well he's gone right up Sarwan not quite getting it where he wanted but uh, ironically probably has got one more run from that slice drive that he would have if he hit the deep cover 75 for one 20 overs gone Yes. 
was just 24 runs and the wicket of Gale. And a change in bowling now. Very inexperienced campaigner in Chris Harris, the most experienced of the New Zealanders. He was here in 1996, the last time the New Zealanders were here. Bowls slow medium off uh, the wrong foot, rather strange looking action. Two hundred and eleven matches he's now had, one hundred and eighty nine wickets. Economy of uh, below four and a half runs and over. Didn't score today, but uh, is a very useful left handed batsman as well. And uh, a very keen cricketing mind, both he and Fleming. One of those bowlers, Harris, that seem to. The ball doesn't seem to reach you. You tend to be reaching for it all the time, waiting for it. Seems to be able just to hold it up there. Very effective, very useful bowler in one day cricket. And Eric! Very short. And pulled away by Chanda Paul, so that eases the pressure somewhat for the West Indies. Really, it's quite remarkable what a boundary can do after a long period which we've had of inactivity from the West Indies. Well, this was short by Harris. So it's long up, really. And Chandra Paul gave it a treatment. Between boundaries, it just reflects the the control that the New, New Zealanders have had on proceedings. Lovely sunny afternoon now. Still quite a bit of cloud about, but it's very high. Right. Did have uh, some very heavy rain in this area yesterday. A couple of uh, showers. But the outfield has uh, resisted it very well. Very pretty item, this. Uh, looking here at a place called Marigold Bay. Lovely sheltered bay, back by Green Hills, and sports a little palm fringe beach, which you might see shortly in your picture. The inner harbour is so long and deep that the entire British fleet is said to have once escaped French warships by ducking inside and covering their mast with coconut fronds. That was uh, when the French and the British as were all the European powers were fighting over the West Indian islands. So this island was French for a long time. Oh, Change hands quite frequently before right. the British finally secured uh, the island. Became fully independent in 1979, St. Lucia. I got those of you who may have remembered uh, the 1967 movie, the musical Dr. Doolittle. Not the one with Eddie Murphy, the other one. The other one starring Rex Harrison. Uh, younger viewers uh, may associate Dr. Doolittle with uh, Eddie, Mur Eddie Murphy. Useful over for the West Indies. So far, seven off it. We hope you enjoyed uh, our little visit to Marigold Bay and our little story. Oh. Oh, nice. End of Harris's first Come over. On. Yielded seven for the West Indies, 82 for one.
West Indies with 82 for one, chasing 249, and they really need a bit of a hurry up here. New Zealanders have done extremely well to have pinned them down. Sawan with 10 off 35 deliveries. Chandapal done a lot better, 40 off 58. In the commentary box now, Simon Croskill, and with him, Ian Bishop. Victoria keeping things uh, really tight at the moment. Oh, yeah, it did. That's a tense little period, isn't it? Victoria's come on, Gale is gone. And so far, in the last 10 overs or so, it's been a struggle for the West Indian batsmen. With this pressure building, you get the feeling that something is about to happen sooner or later. And the last man who will want to see a run rate of over six and over is Brian Lara sitting in the pavilion, out of form, not in any good rhythm. He won't want to come in with that type of task ahead of him. These two are very good players of slow bowling, so they've got to get a move on. There's Brian Lara. a little more company than he's got there by the looks of it just uh, Ricky Skerritt the manager away to his right <laughs> some shorts giving a bit of room with Sawan just a single with the sweeper taking it 83 for one. Is just uh, slipping behind, but they've still got the wickets in hand. And they're just slipping behind the required run rate of 5.89. Hey, Nike! Chris Harris will be just as difficult to get away. Now then, despite my turgid period of play at the moment, West Indies eight fours, no sixes so far in the innings. And we'll take a look at New Zealand's efforts in a moment. We'll take a look at the uh, boundaries for New Zealand. 24s and three sixes. Uh, three of those belong to Styris. Tell you a little bit about that in a moment. Another single. Now the sponsors of the series, Cable and Wireless, they've made a donation to the AIDS Action Foundation. And they've been offering 100 US for each six hit and uh, $3 for each four. Harry is so close and in terms of uh, the amount of money raised so far they've gotten up to $381 for the charity and Ramnar Sawan on that effort looking to add to the total if he could oh. and he might just do so not that high over Harris's head just a single 
So they're going pretty tough for the West Indies at the moment. Well over 200 One Day Internationals. Chris Harris, been around a long time. Unusual bowling action. A bit like yours. It's nothing like mine. Over. End of the over, 87 for one. So look at the equation there, 162 balls, and 162 <laughs> on their way to getting the Sawan finally, getting the ball away, and on towards backward point, just two runs up, a lot of effort for a couple. Well, he has to take a risk or two now, because the run rate prior to that couple of runs, and got the six and over. It's been a quiet period, I think it's just about time something is done one way or the other. Oh! Turn. Leaving Sawan in about three miles. And he's off a good part of the pitch as well. Not much to do with the foot marks created by any of the bowlers. Ah! So he's giving it some air, but it could be out caught here. It bounces just in front of the fielder. Daryl Tuffy with the man racing in to try and get to it. Just helping it across the line. That's a pretty risky shot because he took it from outside the off stump. It's going to turn further away from him. Fortunately for Sawan, Tuffy is not the quickest at six foot five. So the pressure starting to build, starting to tell. Singles, but it doesn't work out like that, does it? No, it's a little bit more difficult than that. Ideally, what the West Indies do have is wickets in hand. Tori has bowled well, just under three runs and over. Very economical, it's caused some problems. Again, tossing it up pretty nicely this time by Sawan. They're going to come back for the second because Bond has to move quite a way around to his left. So two off the last ball of the over, 93 for one. His modes of dismissals. The interesting one is caught and bowled first line. 
28 of his 189 wickets. He's done all the work himself. He's got very good variation and sometimes very deceptive to pick up the consistent pace at which he bowls. A lot of the times you'll find the batsman driving because he bowls at full length and defeated by slow balls and hitting the ball straight back to him. But he's also a very good fielder, very mobile to his left and right. It's a good look of his action again. It's not conventional, not classical. He doesn't seem to, to stick that boot out, does he? He seems to just drag it back and, and bend the knee. Oh, what a nice leg, Z! Oh seems to, almost seems to probably bowl off of the trailing leg, the back leg. Almost took that quarter and bold figure to 29 there. Back, 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 back up. In here, right. Throwing the textbook clean through the window. Over. Great over from Chris Harris, 93 for one. about the effort so far. No skyscraper reaching up past that 10 run mark. Oh, last ten. That's why I know the Tory rolling very well at the moment. And I suppose also highlighting the fact that what's necessary in one day cricket isn't so much a wicket for the bowlers, but containing the batsmen. Which some people might think is maybe destroyed or helped to limit some bowlers in, in how effective they are in, in the longer version of the game. Chantal doing exactly what you have to do in a situation like that. Fleming ticking off and letting go pretty quickly. Chantal just looking to work the ball around the square now to pick up the singles. He wants to keep that scoreboard ticking over and to go after the boundaries when they appear. There you go, just turning it away and immediately setting off. And a good understanding between the two. And a single. Oh, Dan. Toffee, the man coming in on the long on boundary. Oh, Fazir Mohammed is making the point at the back of the box. It's nice to see a spinner who's tossing it up, especially in this version of the game as well. We've seen so many spinners who keep it flat and really push the ball through. The Tory gives it a bit of air. A bit of room there for Chandler Paul, nicely played. Should get at least a couple of two men converging on the ball. Well, you look around the world today and you find that a lot of left-arm spinners, whatever little there are, tend to bowl in a very negative mode into the foot marks outside leg stamp, but not this young man. He flights the ball generously, depends on a lot of variation. He turns the ball, he's got a very good arm ball. He's a complete ball, a little bit more open chested than the beginning of his career because of some back injuries. There's a little bit of drift on that one, but it drifts off the back for China Paul. Another run. Daniel Luca. 
Vittori. I like that name, Luca. Tony Kersey was talking about Dr. Doolittle and shows that the films he goes and watches. But uh, Luca, of course, from The Godfather, Luca Brazzi. And eventually slept with the fishes. And that's not how it sounds. Oh, lovely dead. Good ball that's the over. to end the over. 99 for one. Again, West Indies behind the New Zealanders. Of their innings, but uh, lost uh, three fewer wickets. Oh, nice Chris eye. Harris has done this sort of job for New Zealand for quite some time now. Frustrating the batsman, kicking off his wickets as a result. Tricking them with a change of pace. Slight adjustment to length. Oh. That brings up the 100 then for the West Indies. They don't have to panic by any means at this point in time. They've got wickets in hand. And the runs are coming in dribs and drabs. There you go, but that's crept up to 6.34 for over the asking rate. Oh. Oh. All right, this. Yes. Also, sometimes you hear about a batsman playing his partner out of form. I don't want to say that that's what Ramna Asawan has done, but the China Paul just seemed to go back into his shell a bit uh, once Sawan arrived at the crease. graphic will show that the West Indies pretty much keeping pace with the New Zealand effort. The important part is that they've kept the wickets in hand and they can launch probably in a short while. Right word, Lewis. Once again, a dot ball to end the over. 101 for one. So the uh, West Indies were um, just falling away from the New Zealand one. Just a little gap opening up, but not much, not much that I would worry. I think would worry Carl Hooper, the West Indies captain. And there you see, apart from just the uh, early overs, it's been pretty consistent. Just that round about the three and a half run for over mark. Change of bowling now. Cyrus coming on to replace Daniel Vittori. And again, another medium pacer in the New Zealand attack. And again, we'll rely on that change of pace. The you know, slower ball. And of course, accuracy. Accuracy with a more of an offside field, and want to keep it just outside that off stump. 
I was looking at his economy rate, Scott Styrus, over his career. He goes at over five and over, which is pretty expensive. Anything below five, you'll be reasonably satisfied with. Below four would be absolutely ideal. There we go. Not a great deal of wickets. Not exactly flattering economy rate. So he's got a job to do. Depends greatly, as you said, on variation. He will take the pace off the ball, try to get the batsman hitting through the line, being defeated for lack of pace probably not a very tall man but he's got a lot of confidence had a very good innings today and it's some, so often happens with the all-rounders the batting feeds into the bowling and vice versa yeah, they're just pitching up to that length the batsman can't quite come forward to drive four boundaries for Ram Narasawa, rather for Chandapur. And none for Sawa. Oi! That seems to be a quicker one right. from Styris. It was indeed very much quicker. Hit the deck a bit harder. And that in itself can cause some problems for the batsman trying to discern, trying to pick up that increase in pace. The important thing between those statistics of uh, Chandapur and Sawan is the strike rate. Sawan scoring at 42 runs per 100 balls. Sawan, Chandapur in the 60s. Hey. So they need to increase the tempo. Oh! And again, not just on the, the line of middle and leg, and Chandapur seemingly initially looking to work it away through the onside. But suggested that Styris also getting a little bit of movement to take it away from the left-hander and back into the right-hander who is now on strike partnership which is a healthy one in most circumstances and that's a 50 partnership brought up with a lovely boundary Ramnar Asawan picks up his first boundary of his innings. Just give himself some room, better shot, kept his eye on it. Didn't just hit it hard, but he looked at it all the way, found the gap. So someone needs to take a risk or two. Sarawan has finally loosened the shackles with his first boundary. Styrus will probably try to do is bring one just a little closer to him and maybe take the pace off it. Well, too close in to him. Down towards the final leg boundary for more. Well, never rains but it pours. End of the over, 111 for one. over for the West Indies so far. And almost catching up in terms of runs. And uh, that was the last ball of the previous over. Right. A second boundary for Ramna Asawan. And that's the job that needs to be done. And that's uh, very nice from which brings up yet another 50 for him this season and he gets a huge round of applause not only from Ramna Rasawa but of course it's the crowd here An enthusiastic support for Chandapur. Hey! Take a 
appeal. Well, Norris Saar won't find him press. Neither is umpire Eddie Nichols. Chris Harris didn't seem to go up all together at the same time with Chris Nevin. Nevin went up. It's very difficult to ascertain what actually happened there. Going down the leg side from Harris. You just get the feeling out there that when he's coming in, when he lets go of the ball, there's a, there's a juicy ball to hit, and then it's never quite there. Oh, yes, Should probably account for the number of court and bowl dismissals he's got. Pretty good for somebody who's not really turning the ball or whirling at express pace. <laughs> Nicely done by Chan the Port. We'll come back for the second. End of the over. 114 for one. There's no real horrors for them yet. Possibly with the exception of Styris. Shane Bond going back into the attack. It was a little bit expensive in his first spell today, but he bowled with a great deal of pace. Touched at around 91, 92 miles per hour his first real outing for quite some time after recovering from a foot injury that sidelined him at uh, New Zealand's tour of Australia. He's been for over five runs and over and immediately on returning the helmets have come out as well for the two batsmen. And I think that's quite smart if the guy's bowling around 90 miles an hour. He's not a tall man. He's pretty short, pretty stocky. But his fastest delivery was about 93 miles per hour today. That's quicker than anything we've seen this season here out in the West Indies. With the average speed of 90. And that's admirable. Going up with a curtsy. Just, just like a bird getting ready to take off the signal a wide. And what Stephen Fleming needs here, he needs to get a breakthrough to put some more pressure on the West Indies. And after seeing Scott Styris bowl just the one over that went for nine, he's decided, well, that's not quite working. He doesn't have much time to play with. He needs a wicket or two in a hurry. So he's brought back his fastest bowler. Giving a little bit too much width outside the off stump. Lucky to get away with it on this occasion, just a single. Where's he generating his pace from? He's not a tall man by any means. He's fairly broad shouldered. He's got good shoulders on him, very quick arm. He's very strong. Man, let's look at the shoulders on him. Very slight of build. Very well defined, and the arms speed is very good. So down the leg side, that'll be another wide, so not exactly a, a great reintroduction for Shane Bond. 
couple of extras in this over so far. 18 for one. He's short of work, isn't he? He looks it, he looks rusty. The rhythm isn't there. The pace is, but the direction and consistency isn't quite there. Oh dear. And another wide, the third of the over. Nevin having to scamper away to his right, not impressed. But he will know that Shane Bond is coming out of almost a, a rehabilitation camp in Darwin, having had, it's reported as a, a stress fracture to the back or recovering from that. I think he also had a foot injury as well. And certainly, the Kiwis are suffering with a, a number of injuries before setting off on this tour. delivery and they've gone for a run off the no ball that would have been tragic if one of them had been run out going for a single off a no ball indeed more than tragic might have been might have been just short but problems on this end it doesn't run in with a great burst of speed but just balanced enough, just enough momentum. A skilly type of bowler, doesn't get into a very high bound, but gives it all with the body, and gets right through the action, and that's where the pace comes from. Very good rhythm. Got a heavily protective offside in 6 3 field. But you wonder if, if he's looking to get his rhythm back and he's able to deliver at this pace. It must be a joy to watch when he is firing. I can guarantee you that if he goes to the, the opposing end, a 90 mile per hour delivery. could be pretty useful he was very impressive when he played against Australia recently a series that was drawn of course Australia would have produced slightly bouncier pitches and as we said this is a comeback trail so a test matches I suppose is going to be that time where you will see fully rehabilitated Shane but once he's able to stay fit like so many of the other New Zealand players he succumbed time and again to injury. Uh, again, the width given, but as I say, that off field, offside field, well protected. There's a sweeper out there, so just a single. And that's another option for Stephen Fleming. Craig McMillan, very useful all rounder, as well as Nathan Astle. And I do possess so many of these batsmen who can turn their arms over quite effectively. Very deceptive, Craig McMillan. Very short run. Hits the deck pretty hard. Just one ball to go in the over and you have a little time to reflect on it. Think about trying something different for the next one. A pretty long over, isn't it? It's already some ten deliveries gone already. A few wides and no ball. They have to hurry if they want to. It's not on. End of the over. One hundred and twenty-three for one.
Mitchell again looking for the, the big hit over towards mid wicket. There is a man out there changing your commentary team Fazir Mohammed and Wayne Dan. So the Western is trying to push on now. You can certainly sense and see the greater urgency between Chandapal and Sarwan. Needing to score at just better than a run ball the rest of the way to go one up in this series. Boy, oh, Harry. Finding the gap in the infield, but not out on the boundary. One run in the end. Nathan Assel has been a virtual spectator in this series so far. Dismissed cheaply. Both innings. The field placing has been very good by Stephen Fleming. He's handled his team very well in the field. Hit high into the air, but dropping well short of the long off field. Almost choked by that delivery. To slip out of the hands of Chris Harris. Useful effort so far between these two. Left-hander, right-hander combination. After Gale and Chandapo, the two lefties, but on just over 50. Another single, but quite obviously they're looking to move things along. Yes, um, the partnership worth 70 or 180 balls, very slow going. But well, the bowling has been tight. Nice, Harry. Nice. Over. Right on spot again, Chris Harris, end of the over. It's 125 for one. cloud about but the weather has held extremely well on this Saturday and no doubt the hope is that it will do the same tomorrow first one day has to be played on this brand new ground Bond again straying down the leg side he had a very long over previously just doesn't seem to have found his rhythm or direction. Yes, he's bowled with some pace, but hasn't been quite been able to put the ball in the right place consistently. He's either been too wide of off stump or he's strayed down the leg side. It's certainly someone with, with pace, been a bit expensive. Gets the boundary of the inside edge. And uh, maybe as we're in the French Heritage Island, getting the French cut down towards the fine leg position. Welcome for the West Indies, 131 for one. When things are not going for you, they tend to pretty much stay that way. You saw one having a slug at that one, really. Head in the air, just getting an inside edge, and lucky for him, didn't drag that onto the stumps. But West Indies would be quite pleased with that. Not exactly the same magnifique, but good enough. Yeah. Gets it uh, away towards wideish long on, but just a couple of runs. Good. The term pace like fire is really well used in the Caribbean to describe fast bowlers and uh, of course with the French heritage the word souffre is used to describe uh, a lot of uh, the volcanoes around souffre the French word for sulfur which is found in many areas of these volcanic islands oh, no! 
talking about sulfur, we've got the sulfur springs, a barren and somewhat moonscapish terrain, pocked with pools of boiling mud and uh, steaming vents. Visitors used to walk up close to the vents and peer directly into the mud ponds until a local guide leading a group of German tourists stepped through the soft earth and plunged waist deep into the boiling mud. Thankfully, he lived to tell the story. He wouldn't want to go in there. Well played by Sarwan. He's on fire at the moment. Gets it away towards the long one. This is a bad delivery by Shane Bond. Long hop really. Sarwan had all the time in the world to pull this through mid wicket. He made no mistake with it. 12 runs, 11 runs from this over so far. Good over for West Indies. Shaken, wonder if he stood as well. As responds well to being beaten up, pushed out towards extra cover. End of the over, 137 for one. Very productive last couple of overs among the last three. Out towards the line, but dropping well short of the man coming in. Chris Harris certainly perfected the art of bowling with the yo-yo. The batsman just is never sure when the ball is coming to him. Yeah, Chris Harris he tends to just hang it there and catches you so often playing too soon, and that's what happened to Chandra Paul, that previous ball. Yep. This time a more controlled stroke by the right-hander. Importantly, the West Indies have wickets in hand, and that could be so vital going into the final 15 overs. They're working it round well, these two. Trying to keep the scoreboard ticking over for the West Indies. They've got to get to that target. New Zealand recovering from a right. different start. ATs by the captain and Scott Styris. Oh, it's pretty much a run of ball now, Faz and West Indies. Have got wickets in hand. They want to keep up with the pace. Oh, yeah, Again, beaten by the lack of pace. Quite a few options for Fleming. Hitchcock four. Tuffy Vittori as well. Styrus have just started. The over, another dot ball. The West Indies won 40 for one. West Indies are better off both in terms of runs and wickets. But nerves will have to be held at the end. There you can see the very, very similar worms. The 
captain Fleming has decided that he's seen enough of Shane Bond, very wayward in a couple of overs, and it's going to be Hitchcock back on at a crucial time in the West Indies innings. Yes, um, Shane Bond couldn't get it right. Quite expensive as well. And I think Riley pulled out of the attack by Fleming. Hitchcock coming on to replace him. And he bowled quite a good line in length earlier on. That's a very good slower ball. And Shane Bond there. His seven overs to 48 runs. Very expensive indeed. Over six and over. Last spell going at almost 10 per over. Aided by a number of wides and no balls. You get the feeling that Chandapol and Sarawan are just trying to bide their time before the real explosion takes place. Well, yes, it would be really a tragedy for either one of them to get out of that at this stage. Ah! Bowling, going right through the gate. Hitchcock has provided the break for replacing Shane Bond. Just after talking about the need for these to stay together, it's 141 for two. to delivery, Yorker length. Saw one playing all around it. Being comprehensively bold. That's the wicket New Zealand wanted. Saw one goes for 44. 141 for two. One change in the batting order with Chandapol opening, and now Carl Looper has come in at number four, ahead of Brian Lara. And he's there because of the dismissal of Ramnare Sarwan. Yes, and that's a very good delivery, right up in the block hole. Sarwan trying to work it to leg. Missed it completely, and he's delighted. He's a happy man. That's his first wicket in international cricket. He'll be happy about that. Still a lot of batting to come. Lara, the two Hines, Ridley Jacobs. They wouldn't want to get that deep, of course. The roar as the captain gets off the mark. Despite his name, he's not a man of many mysteries, Paul Hitchcock. Works as best as he can, straight up and down the line, and gets uh, an important breakthrough. Yeah, he keeps it simple. Runs up, doesn't try to do too much with the ball. Just try to put it down. And he's bowled well. The wicket there of Sarwan, six overs, 6.3 overs for 21 runs. Finds the gap on the infield just for the single. Shanda yeah. Paul, who's lost quite a bit of his momentum from early on in the partnership with Chris Gale. Six and a half runs per over required now. And there for a while, almost 100 balls, four boundaries. It's quite a literary sort of match. We've got a Hitchcock, we've got a Fleming. I suppose we need a Naipaul on the West Indies side.
and the over 143 for two. Sixteen overs left. Tight battle developing. Gets it away very well, finding the gap out to square leg. Shivnarine trying the ball. Is this the signal of his second coming? 143 for two. This is well played by Chandra Paul. Swept it, swept it hard. Placed it well. Got it square. The man is behind square, there's a man behind square, no chance of cutting at all. In the air, but well play of the infield. Really looking to step up the pace, China Paul. Weston is closing in on 150. West Indies in a very good position here. Two. The rate is required weight is nice. over six, but Weston is in a very good position. Only having lost two wickets in a very good position here to take off. So far, the tempting are going on the accelerator. Clearly mindful of his role at this important stage of the innings. Oh. Just a single. Another 15 overs left after this one. We're set for a grandstand finish. We'll test the nerve and uh, the know-how of the two captains. One at the crease, one marshalling the field. Single at the end of the over, no 150 mark. for two. Still, those worms remain entwined. Clearly enjoying each other's company for a long time. Looking for the big one there, just the single at the end. that experience that he's gained to 15 years of international cricket and uh, 100 needed now so the countdown is on but the rate is also going up ah! well, I'm not surprised to see Carl Hooper coming ahead of Brian Lara. He's in very good form, Carl Hooper, this season. And he's very good at improvising. 
Very good at dropping the ball and running. As we saw just a minute ago. He uses his feet well. And he's the ideal man in this situation. Again, they're content with okay. just the singles. Keeping the wickets in hand despite the direct hit. Lara has the look of a man who's already working out what he needs to do when he gets in, if he gets in. Tremendous record against India. The series just ended. Likewise, Chandapur, part of the series. Not all that far away from the crease, but a slinking of the run. Would have been suicidal. It's a very good change of pace. Hitchcock is the one hurrying on to Carl Hooper, looking to run it down to third man, but not having the room. The ball coming into him. Again, a single off the last ball of the over. It's 154 for two. Again, the West Indies ahead on a runs and wickets, 14 overs left, but you do get the feeling there is a grandstand condition prospect. Yes, a dot ball at the start from Chris Harris, and uh, back in the commentary position, Simon Croskill with the ambition. feeling that the turning point could be when Vittori comes back into the attack with Hooper's ability to play the spinners. This captain has the option of four more overs from Vittori. Two more from Hitchcock, three from Bond, who's been very expensive. The star is just the one over bold. So there's Craig McMillan who can turn his arm over. Still a lot of cricket left. Oh. Uh, As you said, the West Indies can up the tempo at any time that they choose, or at least that's the assessment from here with Lara, Hines, well, a double dose of Hines, really, and Ridley Jacobs still to come. This has been an impressive spell by Chris Harris, hasn't it? He's really done a good job. Almost as you'd expect, really. Great delivery. Movement off the seam. Carl Hooper still not able to get fully hold of it. Just another run. 155 for two. It's in hand, but that uh, run rate pretty much on the side of unhealthy. Because it means that if you lose a couple of quick wickets, then you're in serious trouble. Uh, 
A lot of noise here in St. Lucia as the, I suppose, the St. Lucian version of the Mexican wave. And the stadium not full by any means, but an awful lot of noise. Most of it generated from that section of the ground. And this could be the turning point that I was talking about with Daniel Vittori coming back on. The 21 runs from the six overs, not bad. Three and a half and over. And he'll be bowling to Carl Hooper. Now he's been tossing it up so far in his spell. We'll see what he does now. Well, he's tossed it up as well. And nicely played by Carl Hooper. Now think about the second. And it's on. Still plenty of noise. And it's the Mon section that's doing the way. And it comes right around the other side of the ground. Again, looking to play across the line. The Tory really hasn't changed his bowling style. It's a very good sweeper. He's very good at using his feet and hitting the ball down the ground and over extra cover. He's got a wide array of shots. Almost too many to choose from at times. Carl Hubert. And to that, he's in good form. Like a bowling by the Tory. Two men back for Hooper. Back on the boundary, and he likes to hit straight. There they are. Let's use the arm ball with good effect on that occasion. Hooper looking for room to guide it behind point. Just look at this. Just coming straight back in. Very good bowling. He knows he has to bowl straight. The trajectory is just a little flatter. Well, Hooper's gone for the drive. Quite getting under it. Really is good bowling from Vittori. Not quite sure why he's wearing one of Lou Vincent's shirts. Seven and a half runs per over required, but eight wickets in hand, and that's the you know, in fact a fourth West in these. They've got wickets in hand, and you can take a few risks, a, a big over or two anywhere, and bring that run rate right down to more manageable proportions. Anticipation all around this ground. He's pecking the West Indies dressing room as well. China ball using his feet, he's gone over the top. That's six runs. Beautiful shot. From Shib Narayan Chandapal in spanking form this season. As a man out at long off, he had no chance. 164 for two. Just managed to bring the runs for over rate down with that superb six from Charles. That's the way to play. Bang. Oh, now Hooper's gotten into the act and he could be in trouble. And a great attempt down at Long On from Daryl Toffey. Really did try to get to it. This is where he's so strong. It was close to the field at Lamont, tantalizingly. Picked his gap well, Carl Hooper. Mm, talking about a couple of big overs. This is the sixth of the last ball of the previous over. So we've had just a 
just about 11 runs in the last three deliveries. And just look at how the run rate has come now. It's dropped quite significantly in four deliveries. And that's due to the fact that West Indies have wickets in hand. Nice adjustment by Chan Paul again. He was looking to come down the track. And Harris just looking to push it down the leg side. He made the adjustment. Picked up a run. Since Harris's last over as well. He's looking to end it up. He can pick up a wicket. I feel that he would have done a good job. Yeah. The West Indies have just about bumped it up. This is how Chris Harris is bowled. A very good period towards the middle of his spell. And just this last over, and they are now just going at maybe around six or seven. No. Oh, lovely. Good shot by China Paul again, just chipping it down the track. Just looking to loft it over Harris's head. Did well, 173 for two. Great spell from Chris Harris, and when you think he's bowling at two batsmen who are really looking to get on with it and could do so with relative abandon based on how many wickets they have in hand. Good work from Chris Harris. And there are the worms. Just entwined together like a pipe cleaner. And now the West Indies just looking to break away. Over. That's uh, Kai Hutok going for the big hit and uh, gets away with it. Coming back for the third. And could almost have gone there. It's a little bit of fortune, just slashing it over the head of one of the two fielders in that backward point position but the challenge has been laid down the gauntlet is down Carl Hooper and Chanda Paul now realize that the tempo has got to be lifted sooner rather than later they've already begun to do that and New Zealand need a wicket that's the only way to slow down the momentum that has been built here by the West Indies the run rate has dropped even further that 6.74 required now <laughs> A single, provided there's no misfield, there isn't. And you're looking at 72 runs from 64 balls, and it's always dangerous when you've got to get more runs than there are balls available. That's not what you want to look up at the scoreboard and see. And they've got to change that equation pretty fast, even in the face of eight wickets left. A dot ball. Carl Hoover won't want to see any more of those. And the new man who would come in would have to take maybe an over to adjust. Oh, that's gone. Nobody looks at that one. That's six runs. Big one, too. Well, that will help with the equation immediately. 66 to win on 62 balls. Well, there's not much he could do about this. It's just a very good shot. He swept it clean off the stumps. Hit it powerfully. There's so many areas that he can score. Nicely played again by Hooper. Not much Vittoria could have done with it. Wasn't a bad ball by any means. Yeah. You've got to put it down to the ingenuity of Captain Carl Hooper, who is in prime form. 
Big six. There's one a little bigger than that from Styris in the New Zealand innings, when a few rows back near the run throw over eight coming down. Remember at one stage it was about 7.48, it's now 6.39. of the over an important one for the West Indies 184 for two Victoria's figures just taking a little bit of a battery. The economy rate going up past five. Still Toffee Bond with overs in hand. And uh, Toffee being brought back into the attack. It's fairly economical in his first effort. Still more runs needed than there are balls available. And the run rate still above six. But it's manageable, and the crowd know that they sense that. They sense that this eruption between these two batsmen was a long time in coming, and they're enjoying every minute of it. Every run has gone down very well. should get to the boundary, it does. So the run's flowing, despite the change in bowling. Delight for the fans, not so much for Darrell Toffey. Well, they can afford no looseness at this level of the game, especially at this stage of a one-day international. Just dragged it down, hasn't got his rhythm going just yet. to the batsman just outside the off stop and the result is three runs less and just look at that runs to win 60 balls 58 look how easy that came down simply because of the wickets in hand two batsmen in good form during this season chanda paul sent in to open the batting and he's taken this he's grabbed it 79 strike rate of 73 scored quickly a couple of lean patches in the innings where he struggled and he stayed there. Carl Hooper, a strike rate of 96, and that is what makes all the difference, his rate of scoring. Didn't know too much about that one. Yeah. And this is where, ideally, New Zealand could do it, a bowler who could either reverse swing the ball or so pick up a wicket and set things back or someone with a good turn of pace Fleming has to manipulate everything within his reach and manipulate his field there'll be a bit of tension out there at the moment not only for the bowler the captain but the other fielders everyone has to try to make something happen good piece of feeling in fact a catch or a run out well that made it a little easier for Fleming trying to pull will also be cognizant of the need to win but he'll also be aware that T is about 21 runs away from a third limited over 100 
margin for error now is it's so small for the New Zealand bowlers. Another boundary. And that statistic will have swung fully in favor of the West Indies. So, 190 for two, 41 overs completed. Superb knock by Shivnarain Chandapal. And now Carl Hooper looking pretty solid at the wicket. A couple of solid commentators now. Tony Cozier, Wayne Daniel. Thank you, Simon. So the first match here at this uh, new Bosajura Stadium, certainly producing what looks as if it's going to be a very exciting finish. 190 for two, nine overs remain. Shane Bond, who has been expensive, now going to come back. Coming off injury, he hasn't had any major cricket for some time. Last uh, international cricket he would have played would have been against Bangladesh, and that would have been in a couple of test matches in New Zealand last January, after which he was injured, didn't play in the series against England. Took some time for him to come back. Here he is now. Policeman Shane Bond had to put that career on hold when he was called into the senior team. There are his uh, figures. Fastest delivery at 148. Ks per hour, 92.4 miles an hour. If he did here, he was quick when he came to the Caribbean. He proved it in Australia. And even here on his return, up above 90 miles an hour. So now speed gun. Those uh, readings which we have and have had through the series, both the Indian and will have during the New Zealand series as well. Important that the West Indies keep the scoreboard ticking here. Shane Bond hasn't bowled well, a bit rusty, doesn't have that confidence at this stage. And Chandra Paul and Carl Hooper looking very set at this stage, will take full toll of that. Brilliant save. That ball had gone past him. They would have taken the run. They couldn't set off until he had made the save. Styris in there. Trying to pull, not quite timing it. Diving save to his left. West Indies will have to fight all the way for these runs. New Zealand not going to give up. Played wonderfully today for his 85. So Shane Bond has come back, just the two runs off the over so far, one ball to go, he's pulled the scoring rate back. 
57 needed off 40 deliveries. Wickets are in hand. The West Indies won't want to lose either one of these. They're in. Chandapol has been there from the start, being put back as the opening batsman. He's got 81. Hooper in good form. These are the two batsmen who were in form against India. Fine comeback. Just two runs off the over. The West Indies are 192 for two. 42 overs gone. There's the equation, and it really does add up to an exciting finish. Over seven runs and over now, that's not easy. Hooper completely mistiming the shot. Boundaries needed. Two off the last over, that will set them back. Yes, you want to get into the comfort zone, and you really want to have a situation where you have more balls than runs. A couple of boundaries very much needed. At this stage, Carl Hoopy knows that. He's been playing well. I think he's got to try to look to hit him over mid wicket. Or if he can just get away and hit him over extra cover, give himself a bit of room. There he goes over mid wicket, full toss. Won't reach the boundary, but they'll come back for two. New Zealand will know that if they can have a couple or perhaps three overs in which uh, only a couple of runs or maybe three off the overs, that, that would just about settle it for them. If the West Indies get two big overs, certainly would relieve the pressure. Over with, let's say, ten off it. Yes. Carl over here, a foot toss. Not hitting it with a lot of power. Field placing is pretty well spot on. The New Zealanders field spread. Of course, the obligatory four men within the field restricting area, and then all the other fielders dispersed on the boundary. Three runs off the first three balls. And he's looking for a boundary or two before the over is uh, finished. Pick up the run when it's available. They've got a so tight here. West Indies have got to consider not only trying to get boundaries, but also just preserving the two of these in the middle. Once you can have the two of these out there when they're, let's say, another four overs to go even if they have another 30 or even 40 off the last four overs. Two set batsmen can do it. Yes, you certainly don't want to lose the wicket now and having a fresh new batsman coming in, having to get the pace of the wicket, the feel of things, the atmosphere, having to look to find his rhythm. So these two really have to stay there. They have to look to, to take it home for West Indies. Needing a couple of boundaries. Don't want to leave everything to the, to the end, to the last. That'll be a wide. That helps them. Additional run, additional ball. Tension all around New Zealand supporters who come all the way from the land of the great white cloud. Other side of the earth. They've made a long journey here to follow their team. Hey, 
ends off the over. 198 for two, seven overs remain. So there are the two key men. Stephen Fleming, the captain of New Zealand. Carl Hooper, captain of the West Indies. Hooper in the middle now. Fleming has done an extremely good job. First of all, with the bat today. Made 89 out of New Zealand's 248 for seven. And that was an absolutely crucial innings because he was the one who was a steady influence. New Zealand at one stage, 55 for four, and then he shared partnerships of 57 with Vincent, 91 with the spectacular Styrus, hit out for 85 from 82 deliveries, three sixes and seven fours for Styrus, and that really was the innings which pushed New Zealand up to that challenging total. Now Bond to Hooper. Singles are okay for New Zealand. West Indies need more than one run per ball. 50 off 41. Yes, they've got to get really into that comfort zone, West Indies. They want to have to face, have more balls than runs, really. Still 7.32, the required rate. Too many between the runs and the balls. This certainly relieves some of the pressure for West Indies. Chandra Paul had a bit of room there to swing his arms. He hit it well, timed it well. Tuffy with two more available overs. Bond will have only one after this if they use him. Hitchcock, the newcomer, has two more. His ball really well so far. There's a man out there. Just a single this time. But already six off the over. So Hitchcock with two more. I would think they'd use him because he has been very impressive. He has two more. Tuffy has two more. Vittori, two more. He's bowled pretty well too. Styris, only one over. So they have uh, another six overs after this. Maybe two from Hitchcock, two from Tuffy, two from Vittori. All these things go through the mind of a, a fielding captain in the one-day international. Yes. Having to hurry. Scooting home, Chandler Paul. Seven off the over. So far, two to go. Yes, every run counts. Was home quite safely. Crowd ready, completely enraptured by the proceedings. Beats him, goes down the ground, it won't go for four, but they'll come back for a second. Hitchcock just with a little problem down there as he came across from uh, long on, just uh, clutched the back of his right calf. There he is now, he chased around. He's made an impressive debut. Well, he played uh, up in Jamaica, but he didn't bowl there. But an impressive uh, first bowl for New Zealand. Eight overs, one for 26, got rid of Sarwan. Nine off 
the over. 4 7 for 2. Six overs remain. the equation now 42 of 36 deliveries six overs plenty of wickets in hand Lara to come next and even though he has been out of form he is still Brian Lara and then after him we have Ryan Hines Rindy Jacobs and the bowlers now Stephen Fleming in deep conversation as to who should be used next Eddie Nichols has a look at the ball Shows it to, Eddie, to Rudy Kurtzen. Looks pretty clear. Umpires can uh, make the change if it does get scuffed up or if it uh, becomes discolored. Looks okay. But it looks as if they want it changed. Carl Hooper did go up and have a word with Rudy Kurtzen. So it looked as if he said, look, Rudy, this ball is uh, in need of a change now. Fourth umpire will come out, Ahsoka De Silva. Advertising boards, he's got to vault those every time. Comes onto the ground. And every time we wince. So there's a box of balls. And he'll go back over that uh, advertising board, carrying the old ball with him. New Zealand players now in a huddle. This is an opportunity for them just to regroup. Hooper and Chanderpaul also out there. Tense situation now. And what a finish we've had for the opening match. This uh, first one-day international, first international match on this uh, New stadium here in St. Lucia. Easily done. Also a chance here for Cooper and Chandra Paul to settle down. Corey Cullimer brought a drink out for them. Perhaps some advice, words of advice from the manager and the coach. Don't do anything rash. Try to keep scoring, not to lose the wicket. Now, at this stage, but they have, but they have to keep scoring. Full French Chandra Paul. Well, they're bringing back Scott Styrus now. He showed great character today, coming at the end of the innings with a bat when he made that 85 of 82 deliveries. He's only had one over so far. So his character is going to be tested once more. Six overs remain. 42 needed. The West Indies here certainly aided by the fact that these two batsmen are so experienced. In fact, uh, Hooper, only two international cricketers who played the uh, international cricket longer than Carl Hooper. First uh, came into the West Indies team in 1987. Only Steve Waugh of Australia and Wazam Akram of uh, players still engaged in international cricket have uh, been in it longer than him. Chanderpaul has been in it since 1994. Tucked away. Just chopped the single. So it's not only the experience, also the form that they've had. Both of them over 500 runs in the Test Series against India. Both with uh, half centuries in the three one-day internationals against the Indians. Just 
the single. Hooper looking for the big one. Yes, I think Hooper and Chandra Paul realizing the urgency here to score boundaries and having an almighty swing, Carl Hooper. Not timing it at all, but that's the pressure. And they've got four singles off the first four balls. They're playing it pretty well here. This experience is coming through. Nothing rash yet. Five overs remain after this. And they know that it's essential that uh, they remain there as long as they possibly can without uh, doing anything rash just yet. Who's your money on now, Wayne? Pose. I'm going to leave that up to you, I think. That's out. Well, if there's any room on the fence, I'll sit next to you. But I'd say from this position, if the West Indies don't win it, they'll really be kicking themselves. Eight wickets in hand. 37 off 31 deliveries, two batsmen set, good pitch, fastish outfield, lovely seeing light. I don't think the crowd will be too uh, happy if they lose it. That goes for four. That's helpful. Nine off the over. 216 for two. Five overs remain. Countries represented in the West Indies uh, cricket board. As we saw this morning, there are several different flags, anthems. But if you ever doubt that there's one West Indian people, just come to a cricket match, wherever it's held in the Caribbean. Same reaction today here at this new stadium. You could be in Sabina Park, Jamaica, or Bora, Guyana. There they are, carrying the solution flag. Squeeze it through. Chance for a couple. This is well played by Carl Hooper. His experience showing here. Not trying to hit it too hard. I think he anticipated Hitchcock trying to aim for the, the block hole. Paul Hitchcock in uh, some physical problems here. We saw earlier chasing a ball in the outfield. Uh, just started to cramp up in the right calf. And after the first ball of this over as well, he just was feeling it. Seems okay there now. It's been a really lion-hearted performance by him. Now the pressure on. Now, ball is in. And they'll come for a second as the throw misses. Very alert work on the part of Chandapal. He was coming to the danger end. As soon as the ball was thrown and missed a stump from Chris Harris, he was off. A poor cricket here by the man backing up here. He should have been in a long time anticipating that throughout the stumps and allowed another run. Beautiful shot, typical Carl Hooper. A 
that's a lovely stroke, all grace, timing, power in it as well. Happiness is a Carl Hooper on drive for four in the closing stages of a one day international. Certainly surprised Hooper. Slow ball. strikes again he's really been a find for New Zealand match not over by any means a very good delivery he was aiming for that block goal from the start of the over two balls before Carl Hummel played a lovely shot off him through mid wicket for four but that delivery was spot on Carl Hummel goes for 47 225 for three Bit of a surprise here, no Brian Lara, Ridley Jacobs instead. With the West Indies at 225 for three, needing 249 for victory. There are another four overs and one ball remaining. It's just about level pegging, 24 of 25 deliveries. As Paul Hitchcock has just made another very timely intervention for New Zealand. So no Lara yet. Here's how Hooper went. Yes, it's a good delivery by Hitchcock right into the block hole. And Carl Hooper playing over that one. Now it's uh, Vincent Vittori, if you read the shirt. In fact, it's Daniel. He's uh, wearing a borrowed shirt from one of his teammates, but it is Daniel Vittori who is going to come on, left arm spinner. Four overs remain, he has two available to him. He's going to bowl to the new batsman, not easy. When you just come in and you've got to start 
with their foot right down on the accelerator from the beginning. And that's the position that uh, really Jacobs finds himself in now. West Indies need just under six runs and over from the last four. They have plenty of wickets in hand. But they can fall very quickly. Misfielding. Not only does it uh, allow a single to Jacobs, but it allows Chanderpaul to get into the strike. And it's Chris Harris, one of the best fielders in the game. And this is a bad miss here by Chris Harris. And I think it brings Chanderpaul back on the strike. He's been out there for a while. He's got the pace of the wicket, feel of the game. And he's the one that certainly New Zealand wouldn't want to get most of the strike at this stage. Got his body right in behind it this time, even though it was trickling to him. No way through. Just a little chip by Chanda Paul, but they'll come for the second. Have to hurry. That's good running by Jacobs. Test the fielder. The return was weak. This is very good running by Jacobs. Just chipped down the ground by Chandra Paul. Jacobs turned, saw the man very slow onto it, and a very weak yeah. wide throw. He's able to get back comfortably. Very good running by Jacobs. Scott Styrus, the fielder out there. Batsman have been in this situation before. Ridley Jacobs, the last time was against Zimbabwe in Bulawayo in a one day international when he came in, won the match of the fifth ball of the last over. Oh. Again, not such a good return from Styrus. Didn't cost him anything this time. It's very good running by these two, Sandra Paul and Jacobs. Always good to run the first one hard, put the fielder under pressure. Crowd anticipating 100 now, 98. Chips it away. Better this time from Cyrus, three times in the over. So the end of the over, six runs off it. Three, over, three overs remain, it's 232 for three. The target is 249. Shivnarayan Chanderpaul continuing this quite extraordinary season that he's had. 300s in the Test Series against India, over 500 runs in that series, and here he is now on the verge of another 100 in his first innings against the second tourist of the year, the New Zealanders. Three overs remain. For the first time in a long time, the West Indies have managed to get the runs to win lower than the balls to be bowled. Hitchcock it is. Jim Narayan Chandrapur, 100 number three in one day internationals. 100 number four for the season. This is very well played by Chandrapur. He gets a congratulating hug there from Ridley Jacobs. And he's 
customary kiss of the ground. Very well played, got bogged down early on, but never lost his cool, never did anything rash, kept going. And a very good knock by Chandra Paul, very good hundred. Two previous hundreds were against India, 137 in Barbados. <laughs> India, going to be a catch, Jacobs goes. Another wicket for Paul Hitchcock. Daniel Vittori holds the catch, Jacobs is on his way back. The crowd stunned in momentary silence. New Zealand haven't given up by any means. It's 2.33 for four. Well, this is what happens when you lose wickets. The new batsman comes in. He has got to look to get after it at this stage. And that was beautifully bowled by Hitchcock. Held it back, slow delivery. Jacob threw the shot too early and held out to the man at mid-off. Vittori, he goes for three. 233 for four, the West Indies. from Cross to Chandapur is in strike right now. But the new batsman is a fat fellow by the name of Brian Lara. Now, when is the last time, if ever, the West Indies have used Brian Lara at number six in the order, coming in at 234 for four, when the target is 249? Lara has been out of touch for the entire season. This is the opportunity for him. Even if he only makes 10 or 12, it'll be important. It can win the match. First time he's ever batted at number six in one day internationals. Only twice has he batted lower than five. He's got a three. First ball. It's pulling up, but they'll get three. A very positive start for Lara that will boost his confidence. He played this well, Lara. This was Jacobs going, caught Vittori, slower ball, deceived by it. You can see losing his hand off the bat. We'll cross for two. Lara might just get there, but he had to be fast. He is. It's a good flat throw. But Lara was home. Very good run in between the wickets by these two. Now more drama. Shivnarayan Chandapur seems to be having tramps as well. He's got a grimace on his face. Ten more required. And it really would be a tragedy for the West Indies if he had to retire now. Ronald Rogers is very quickly out there with Gareth Breeze. The 12th man for the day's match. Seven runs off the over from Paul Hitchcock. It's his last.
Yes, this will certainly be a really terrible moment for Chandra Paul in West Indies. He's played so well. Got Bogdan, but kept going. Kept his head down. And he would certainly want to be there at the end. Just let me put uh, another element into the equation here. Does Chandapal require a runner? He certainly is uh, in great pain. There's no question it's cramped. The New Zealanders look on with interest. Paul Hitchcock in the middle there. New Zealand have found two new heroes today. Scott Styrus with a bat. He's 85. His highest by far, his highest score in one day internationals. Played magnificently. And then uh, Paul Hitchcock with his first bowl in international cricket. Picking up three wickets. Sawan Hoopan Jacobs. Now the umpire comes up. Rudy Kurtzson is up there just asking Chanda Paul whether he can continue. There's Wavell Hines, padded, ready to come in next, hoping that he won't have to, I'm sure. Rudy Jacobs is going to come as a runner. He's on his way back out, Jacobs. There's some very tense faces on that West Indies balcony. Say it's not over until it's over. And Chandra Paul in some pain. Looks like cramped. He's going to continue. Tension on the faces. As Jacobs comes trotting out to be the runner. West Indies need 10 more. There are two overs and one ball remaining. Jacobs has just, just left the ground after he was caught by Daniel Vittori off Hitchcock. He's back out there now, having to run for Shivnarayan Chandapal. Chandapal with cramp. Will face. Seven runs off this over. There's one ball remaining. And it will be the last ball for Paul Hitchcock on what has been a very impressive performance. The first occasion he's had to bowl for New Zealand in an international match. And there is figures. Reflects some very good bowling. Here's his last ball. And a good one too. It's the over. Ends his spell. Two overs remain. The West Indies need 249 to win. They're 10 short of that. They have six wickets standing. where Chandapal will stand. He takes no part now in this because it's Lara who is facing. Jacobs will be the runner. He's at the non-striker's end. Two overs remain. Ten runs to get. It'll be Vittori to Lara. And at least uh, Chandapal and Rudy Kirkson can share a smile. Whole ground. You can just feel the tension. Single, reduces the target to nine, brings Chandapal back into the strike. Won't be able to use his feet as nimbly as he was earlier. He's had cramps, returning to his opening position for the first time in a couple of years, Chandapal, and proving a success. He's right away. 
It's gone, it's gone, and dropping just inside the boundary for four. This is a tremendous shot by Chandler Paul. Slight delivery by Vittori, using his feet well and getting it over mid-off. What a tremendous knock this has been by Chandra Paul. Just four needed now. Why is it that cricketers just like to prove commentators to be absolute idiots? Having said that he's just had a cramp, he won't be able to use his feet as nimbly as usual. Next ball, he just chips down the wicket and knocks Vittori over extra cover for four. Crowd on their feet now, anticipating a West Indies victory. Cheering, Lara, Lara, they're saying. French Creole phrase that they use here in St. Lucia, e gas. Means the same thing as, I suppose, wow or crash, bam, water. First match at this new stadium. Bossager Stadium here in St. Lucia, and what a christening it's had. He gas again, but not quite enough this time. 246 for four. West Indies need 249, they're only three away. There we go, three required, last over. With New Zealand 248 for seven from their 50, the West Indies are 246 for four from 49. Darrell Tuffy will be given the opportunity to see if he can spring a miracle for New Zealand. He's had eight overs, one for 32, the big fast bowler. Yes, um, is that bet still on calls? As I said, I'm not going to ask you now, though. is absolutely ecstatic. What a match we've had. West Indies win with five balls remaining by six wickets. 250 for four, plays 248 for seven. It's well played by West Indies. Got bogged down at one stage. Required a run rate in excess of seven. On several, on several occasions, Chandra Paul and Sarwan couldn't get the ball away, couldn't find the gaps, but Chandra Paul kept his head, played very well, and he's not out at the end. On 108, 
Superb knock by him. Lara just staying with him on nine. And a very good win by the West Indies. So they've just come off a disappointing one-day series against India. On a high after winning the Test Series against India, losing the Test the One Day Series 2-1. But this is a good start by the West Indies. We've had a wonderful match. Manager Ricky Skerritt there just asking the jubilant spectators to give their players a chance. They've been leaping over the fence over on the popular side of the ground. And that is so typically West Indian. I think that paced it well and it shows that even though you have a very high run rate facing you if you have wickets in hand you're in with a chance of getting to the target and West Indies had wickets in hand all the way they were very much behind on most occasions but Chandra Paul stayed on to the end and that was crucial West Indies. Somebody has to go on, and he did. That's the start for the West Indies. Just four overs gone. The target 249. Daryl Tuffy to continue. Trying to fall again, playing across the line. This time, not getting any bat on it. Trying to fall here, looking to hit this one somewhere over mid on, wide of mid on. Playing across the line. He's been doing that quite a bit recently. Should be looking to hit those balls on the offside. Play as straight as possible early on. West Indies don't want to lose early wickets. By Tuffy. What if he had to make a decision between cricket and rugby? Daryl Tuffy, a Maori. And uh, on that subject, Jeff Wilson making a return to cricket. China for just to run for it, but always in control of the shot. Shane Bond down at third man, big fast bowler, but moved quickly onto the ball. Trying to work this ball on the leg side. Slower delivery. You can see the fingers wrapped around that, just twirling the fingers over it. Chris Gale lucky that he got enough length on it. Went up high in the air, but well clear of the fielder. Get on. Again, Chan Fall just content to wait for the delivery. Runs it down to Bond once more. So mixing. The aggression with I suppose patience and a little bit of style from Shibnor and Chandapur. Used to have a problem with his pads with Chandapur. I always seem to cramp it. That's Christopher Gale. Towards Bond at third man, he's got to watch the bounce. Oh, he does day. almost spun away from him. 
end of the over then. 23 without loss. after five overs the West Indies ahead and uh, there the, the current run rate is 4.6 per over which is just slightly below the required rate there's uh, almost a trademark shot from Christopher Gale just a push down to long off and he picks up a boundary beats the two fielders and it really was just a gentle push from the Jamaican Full toss here by Shane Bond and Chris Gale didn't try to hit it too hard. Just kept his head down, pushed it past mid off. The man is wide in that position. Chris Gale there looking for the big shot, not getting hold of it, slicing it down to third. That was the last over. Just sort of squaring him off a bit, Shane Barn. Not the uh, previous delivery. Almost just the beginnings of an inside out shot. But just a gentle push. And then four runs. Just have a look at this. Almost swinging the bat around in the, in the hands. And the delivery before that, where he got the boundary, it was on that sort of line. So far, Shane Bond just forcing Gale back on that occasion. Yeah, 91.7 is his fastest so far, memory serves. Not far off it. Interesting to see how long through his spell he generates the same amount of pace. defensive stroke and you can sometimes see why he gets into trouble the back seems to just come down in front of the body there's very little foot movement and if there is any movement off the seam then he's a, a prime candidate for a court behind and he's been caught behind a few times let's have a look at this there Not really pushing out or going back to the delivery just bringing the bat in front of the body and just hanging it in front of the chest This is, this is well bowled by Shane Bond. Bowling is straight as possible to Chris Gale, not giving him any room outside the off stump. He likes to hit the ball of the back foot through cover, extra cover region, region point. Chris Gale is very straight by Bond. Bit of a misfield, and they take the opportunity to take the single. Not the last ball of the over. It's 28 without loss. for over eight okay at the moment for the West Indies at 4.67 oh, 
man sent all the way back down to the boundary for this new over from Coffee. Tall man, he likes a, a full flow of the arms. And, uh, a phlegmatic, phlegmatic character. It's his effort during the uh, one day as that were possible against India. But, uh, a really big 84 in uh, Trinidad. That's big shot to him. And, uh, you wouldn't lose too much money on betting where he'd hit it. Down to the long of boundary for four. Very strong player on the outside, Chris Gale. Slow delivery, but he wasn't deceived by it. Got hold of it nicely, timed it well. of movement from Christopher Gale. There's not a lot of agitation waiting for the bowler. He doesn't, like most batsmen, pull at the pad or flick at the helmet. Surely just seems to want to get the next ball in and away. That's his best against Kenya on that uh, tour of Africa. And is he edging that one? Is it taken cleanly? You look at the outside and the movement. From the umpire, did it carry? And that can only be the question. Certainly, there seemed to be an edge. Eddie Nichols unmoved. And the New Zealanders were all out. Well the appeal by all the umpires. Tuffy is excited about that. Thinking that Chris Gale. Nicked it. Clearly taken by the keeper. No doubt about that. No doubt about that being involved there. But. Uh... What happened on the previous delivery? Oh, the back. Sorry, Wayne, the bat seemed to come down and hit the, the heel. But Eddie, Eddie Nichols wasn't moved. Tuffy thought he had hit it. Over. End of an eventful over. 32 with of the West Indies innings completed 4.57 looking to get up to a target of a further 217 runs changing your commentary team to Zia Mohammed with him is Ian Bishop Certainly has the pace. Sean Paul playing positively, but he's already impressed here in the Caribbean. Sheen Bond, part of the world where fast bowling is certainly revered. Almost 93 miles per hour. 
quickest delivery. Surely it's only relative if you're bowling a slower delivery at 86.6. Still hits. Well, there's an incident in the last over. Darrell Tuffy bowling to Christopher Gale. Now just look at the bat after the ball passes and look at the head of Chris Gale. Just tries to pull it out of the way and the head spins around and all the indications are to me I think he might have nicked this the one that got away. You could hear your pain, Ian Bishop, as a suffering bowler yourself at times. China ball and Gail won't mind. Got an excellent platform at the moment. Took the pace of that delivery down the third man. On the battle. Yeah. Have another look at this delivery. Chris Gale. And just from that angle, it looks as though there was a bit of a deflection there. The keeper was in no doubt. Neither was Daryl Tuffy, who didn't even look back until he did not see Chris Gale walking and then turned around to umpire Nichols. And there's Tuffy. So he really missed out on one. He's the man under pressure. 